Hello, good morning and welcome. This is Cheche, the show where opinion counts, live on Citizen TV. I'm your host, Udwa Kamimo. Now, there's plenty to concern Kenyans this week, including resumptions. In the first case, the trial of the Deputy President William Ruto's uh, case at the International Criminal Court um, at The Hague. In the second instance, the resumption of both Houses of Parliament and, of course, the rising cost of living. Well, today's guest has strong views on those issues because he is the minority leader in the Senate. Moses Wetangula represents the Cord Coalition uh, as the senator from Bungoma. We'll also be hearing strong views, as ever, from the Cheche panel of Mutegin Jiao of Royal Media Services and political commentator and journalist David Makali. Um, we'll start with um, the ICC because, of course, um, Cord. You just come out of a strategy meeting a couple of days ago. Uh, you, you know, uh, quite a few of your members walked out of both par um, houses of parliament um, when the uh, motion to withdraw from the ICC came up. What is your position as we speak now? Uh, <coughs> thank you, thank you, Woodwork and uh, friends, Mutegi and uh, David. As you say, there are many things going on, but allow me before I say anything to take this opportunity to send a message of condolences to a senior lawyer who was uh, murdered in cold blood in Bungoma and uh, uh, encourage the family to remain steady, united, and urge the state to hasten investigations to come to the root cause of this continuing insecurity in Bungoma. Back to the your context point. Of, of that, of course, is that this lawyer was representing your opponent in the election petition Absolutely, um, yes, against was, you. Uh, one of the lawyers representing my opponent, but it's a lawyer I know very well. Uh, we lawyers do not have issues with each other. A lawyer doesn't go to court to champion anybody's cause. He goes to court to defend somebody's rights, and uh, that is as it should be. Uh, be that as it may, let's go back to the point. To the ICC, that, uh, yeah. <coughs> The question of the ICC, as you know, has lately dominated uh, the airwaves, the print media, and uh, everywhere in this country, for good measure and for good reason that uh, our president and his deputy have cases that have reached a level of going to trial. I have said this before, that uh, I wish them well. I wish them a fair and just trial uh, if the case has gone to conclusion. And we also wish the victims of the violence uh, justice. I have stood for and I, have, I will continue standing for a very clear position that Kenyan uh, problems deserve Kenyan solutions. And I said this even when we debated the issues in the House. I sat at Serena with my colleagues and the Hansards everywhere will bear <coughs> me out. But I've also said that, uh, like somebody said, uh, choices have consequences. Kenya chose the path and the highway to the Hague. If you look at the Rome Statute, the variables that will take any country to, to, to the Hague are very clear. One, it can be a reference from the Security Council on its own motion, <coughs> and you have seen this happen in some jurisdictions like Sudan, Darfur case. Number two, the prosecutor on his or her own motion can wear their massive violations of human rights and uh, crimes against humanity suspected to have been committed can move in and start investigations. You've seen this in the post Gaddafi Libya. Number three, a state party to the statute can approach the court and ask them to intervene, and this is the case of Kenya. The Security Council didn't come to Kenya. The prosecutor didn't come to Kenya. Kenya went to The Hague. Why did we go to The Hague? The statute uh, provides that countries will be intervened in or will seek help from the ICC where there is either inability or reluctance to deal with such crimes. And at the time Kenya did, there was obvious feeling in this country, <coughs> and for good measure, that there was a judiciary that needed reforms. There was a history and a pattern that uh, had demonstrated very clearly the entrenchment of impunity and uh, the impunities cas cascading towards constant conflicts at election time where we had destruction of property, we had losses of lives, 
and polarization of the country. So many people who felt that the Hague was a choice even coined some uh, ingenious poetic phrase that uh, don't, don't be, be vague. vague. Let's go to the Hague. Let's go to the Hague. In including the deputy um, president um, who called for Absolutely. the speedy resolution yes. um, of the Hague cases. But what is the court position now, given the that court, you just come out of a strategy The court meeting? position is this, that one, we must be realistic. <coughs> a country cannot be run through emotional outbursts through short-term myopic thinking. We are at the Hague, that's a fact everybody knows. Who are How you accusing of short-term and myopic outbursts? Uh, this is what I've seen from uh, the Jubilee members of, of, of Parliament. Right. And the manner in which they have been using very unguarded language, very extravagant language, on issues that they ought to treat with care. One, cases are in court. And we are enjoined, like any other country and any other parliaments, to discuss in a measured and careful manner any matters that are bef before any court. And remember, we submitted ourselves to the court at the Hague. Number two, once you have gotten into the situation where we are, you must look at the legal provisions and legal implications of wanting to pull out. There was the attempt to go via the Security Council uh, to seek uh, uh, deferral. But deferral <coughs> does not apply to Kenya now because under the statute, deferral only applies to investigations or before proceedings start. In the Kenyan cases, the proceedings have started, so there cannot be a deferral. And even if there was a deferral, if those didn't apply, then it is only for 12 months. And the Security Council will then probably renew if you have a good and strong case. But where the cases have been referred, investigated, uh, charges preferred, pretrial hearings taken, and then committal to trial started, it matters not what as a country we do. Even if the motions that have gone through uh, the two houses of parliament were followed by a bill to abrogate Kenya's position on the Rome Statute and to repeal the International Crimes Act, it will have absolutely no consequence on the proceedings mm -hmm. going on at the head. Okay, and so that's a great, it's, it's great to have your opinion because, of course, you have a wealth of expertise in this area. You're pro, a former Minister of Foreign Affairs and you're a lawyer um, mm -hmm. as well. But what is CORD planning to do now when it comes to the ICC? Of course, we must appreciate uh, from the word go that uh, in terms of parliamentary numbers, uh, particularly in the National Assembly, uh, Jubilee has more numbers than CORD. So in the event they bring uh, issues that don't require a two-thirds majority threshold and they mobilize and whip their numbers well, they are likely to win. But that doesn't mean they are right. You can win and be on a highway to nowhere. So as code, we have a responsibility to this country, to our people, including our president and his deputy, to tell them the truth in law and in fact and the consequences of those who are uh, wailing louder than the bereaved are uh, attempting <laughs> to do, you know? Because uh, we would don't want a situation where the president and his deputy look like they're captives of an emotional parliament trying to behave like, uh, like uh, you know, uh, ladies uh, prostrating before a suitor to see who is better than who. We must, as a duty, as leaders, always speak the truth. Let me ask you this, because as I say, you are an expert in these matters. <coughs> and then Dwale was here, we interviewed him, the same, sitting on the same place where you sit. We tend to ask him exactly, what is the need for this, at the urgency? Because they, they had to call Parliament, when they were on search, to do it just before Ruto appeared there on, 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 on the Tuesday. Yes. Now, in your understanding, why, is this, why are they doing this? Knowing very well what they are doing is a complete uh, waste of time. I can only say in that opinion. I can only say that this is uh, a misguided move. I can only say that this is a cheap populism. 
And I can tell you that, uh, in fact, I did post on Twitter when I first saw this, that uh, President Kenyatta and President, uh, his deputy, uh, William Ruto, have just acquired new enemies in relation to the ICC. And these new enemies are Jubilee MPs. Because what they are doing is unproductive, unhelpful, and misguided. Because if you read the Rome Statute, uh, Mutegi, it says very clearly, <coughs> even if, first of all, to withdraw, you don't even need to go to parliament. All we needed was the government to send a notice to the Security Council and give in intention to withdraw. Yeah. That notice will last at least one year minimum. Or the state itself trying to withdraw can tell the Security Council that we require 18 months or 24 months to put our house together or to, in order to withdraw. Once you send that notice, everything that has started, investigations, <coughs> prosecutions, even your commitment to cooperation, you are obligated not to abrogate that. Yes. You can withdraw, but you cannot affect ongoing processes. They now, couldn't very well do that, yes. though, couldn't they? Because the principals who should have been sending the notice are on trial at The Hague. And so it would have seemed as if, on the one hand, they have pledged full cooperation, but on the other hand, they're trying to withdraw from the, the, the country from a process that they have subjected themselves to. You know, as and a so, signatory mm. to the statute, full cooperation is not a matter of, of pledge. It's a legal obligation. You must cooperate. If you don't, there are consequences. But more importantly, the point I was making is, even if you withdraw, you must continue cooperating with all ongoing processes. Mm. That is what the statute says. And you know, if you don't do that, the Security Council is there to take steps. And I would shudder to find my president, even if I don't agree with him, in a situation where he can only go to Ethiopia to attend an AU meeting because the AU allows him to do so. He cannot go to join any family of nations at the Commonwealth, at the UN General Assembly, or in any other gathering the way our colleague, the President of Sudan, is going through. President Bashir can only go to the AU because the AU will allow him anyway, or visit a friendly Arab country or come to a country like Kenya under circumstances that we allowed him to do at the promulgation of the Constitution. Otherwise, he will be captured anywhere he goes. I would not want to see my president, whether I agree with him, to be subjected to the kind of thing. And failure to cooperate, including failure to attend court sessions when you are required without the permission of the court, leads exactly to that. Okay, Apparently. so let's establish what court is going to do because you've outlined your position you're mm -hmm. outnumbered and it seems you've been outgunned and are outfoxed when it comes to strategy I don't so think how so. okay fine so yes. how is cord yes. addressing this because you've clearly outlined your um, opposition mm -hmm. yes. um, to the way this um, ICC issue is going mm -hmm. how is cord um, reacting to that what you is know the, the use response? of those words outnumbered outfoxed outgunned out outgunned I don't know why you're getting this because we're talking of numbers. The fact that you have more numbers than I have does not take away my right to give opinion okay. and to say something about what you are doing. So what you're saying is that you're going to give your opinion? There are situations, and this doesn't apply here, where, for example, to do anything, the parliament must have a threshold of two thirds majority. You believe we don't have it, court don't have it. And if any such thing came to parliament, you can only have a bipartisan approach if you want to have it. If you don't, you will not have it. Where you require a simple majority, obviously even a majority of one is a majority. So it's likely that uh, uh, the majority will win against the minority. That is not outgunning. That is simple arithmetic. Mm. That is not out maneuvering because it doesn't involve any skills for 10 to be more than 8, for 6 to be more than 4. It is just a simple arithmetic. So are you deploying any skills yes. to ensure that you have more people rallying to your side? To I your try, position? Trying, for instance, to get some Jubilee people. I, right. some I, I know for sure. Convincing some Jubilee. I know for yeah. sure 
that in terms of the current parliament, both the Senate and the National Assembly, even as they now use Mutai Nguni's script of tyranny of numbers as if it is uh, the, the, the new Bible, we in code have the tyranny of brains. And I can say this without any fear of contradiction. Poaching members from the other side, <laughs> again, has consequences under the current legal regime. If you read the Political Parties Act, it's very clear that any member of parliament who prostitutes himself around and offers himself for sale to take positions can lose his seat, and they know this. So for us, as a government in the alternative, we're not interested in cheap gymnastics like poaching members, but we put our point forward, and I can tell you, on more occasions than one, after speaking in the chamber or on a platform, many of these Jubilee fellows come to us and say, thank you for speaking our mind. We are under the terror <coughs> of the law yeah. and our leadership. We agree with you. We are giving them a preparation, a platform, and a trajectory to make choices at the end of this term. And that is what opposition is always, a government in waiting. But of course, there are situations where, as an opposition, we'll always lay ambush and find the situations where, in the event uh, like now, they are very uh, reluctant to bring critical issues that require a vote because many of them have taken a trip to the Hague. Uh, if, if they brought, in some instances, they would be outvoted. It's just a question of numbers. So should you not be um, taking advantage of this and trying to push through some of the issues that you want on the agenda? Uh, we have issues on the agenda, uh, but you can see the quick victory that we scored after the, the retreat and PG that we had on Monday. The president very, very quickly moved to order the removal of VAT from uh, commodities that we were complaining about, therefore, or thereby preempting <coughs> our move to go to parliament and move a, a motion and subsequently a bill to amend the VAT Act to remove basic commodities like unga, like uh, sugar, and so on from the VAT list. Processed com commodities. Isn't that a victory? Um, on our part? Uh, I don't think so because, uh, because, yeah. because Jubilee themselves, I saw Kendiki the other day saying they are also not for the VAT. They are the same ones who voted like machines for the same VAT. The <laughs> public all, all is watching. Uh, anyway. yes. Okay, David, d you, you've been smiling to yourself, so I want to bring you into this conversation. Um, with regards to the opposition and how, and how uh, they are um, articulating um, their position, what do you think? Because, of course, the criticism <coughs> has been that it's an e ineffective um, opposition that we're seeing, which has failed to articulate the concerns of Kenyans. Well, first of all, I think with regard to the ICC, uh, I do not know what the opposition or court, despite, uh, you know, Mr. Tangula here outlining, articulating, really, uh, the sensible issues around this attempt to take um, uh, Kenya out of the wrong statute. Uh, but in terms of, as you have asked him, concrete actions to ensure that their position holds sway, uh, really there is not much that I can identify. Listen, the Jubilee is on the move. Apart from uh, what they have done so far, you know, the motion in the House, uh, to pull the whatever uh, the country out of the IC, uh, Rome statute, there is a bill coming. I think uh, tomorrow to the floor now to actually uh, you know take Kenya out of uh, of, of the Rome statute. So, uh, significant step. I don't know whether, given the numbers that uh, you know code has, is going to stop that. Already it lost the previous uh, motion. Now the bill is coming. Obviously, I see that being lost as well. Beyond that, there are uh, diplomatic initiatives which are ongoing, and I think that, you know, uh, Mishmir here would know uh, the current uh, Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs is out there. Uh, the Isn't a tour of African countries, African actually. African countries. Another round of uh, shuttle diplomacy that is expected to defeat uh, the attempt to have Uhuru Kenyatta attend the, the, 
uh, his trial. Uh, culminating in a special ordinary uh, meeting of the AU, I think next month before uh, Uhuru is due to appear at The Hague. All these activities are going on in the name of the country, in the name of the government. Code is here, they hold a different view, but what diplomatic activities are they engaging in, for example, to counter these intense uh, moves that they are opposed to? You know, David, you've made very valid points, but the points that are already uh, being addressed or have been addressed before. Number one, running around the African continent to talk to African leaders about their position on ICC is foolhardy. You're preaching to the converted. The AU already took a position on the ICC issue. The AU has pronounced publicly and openly, and even voted for it. Flying to Nigeria, or flying to South Africa, or flying to Uganda, to go and remind them that you voted against this, please, is a waste of public funds. In fact, it is, to me, a flawed diplomatic engagement. Number two, if you really want to pursue strict diplomatic engagement on how to change the psyche and the thinking on the ICC. Go to the European capitals. Go to the US. Go to Australia. Go to the countries that hold a position that we already know that require convincing. We as the opposition are doing our part. But like I've said before, I do not believe there are certain diplomatic engagements we need to do from rooftops. We don't need to do that. Is, number, is two, yeah. number two, number two, because you raised several issues, it's good right. to give me a moment to, 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 uh, to address them. Number two, you said that uh, the Jubilee is, is moving to bring a bill to Parliament. I have already said in my opening remarks, I said it in the Senate, and I'll say it again here, that whether you bring a bill to the National Assembly or to the Senate and marshal it through to pull Kenya out of the Rome Statute is of absolutely no consequence to our obligation under international law and under the UN Charter to observe human rights and not to commit crimes against humanity. There are countries that already are subjected to the Hague process without signing to the Rome Treaty. Yeah. That, in fact, what the Jubilee is trying to do is actually like dogs barking at a new moon. They are not <laughs> doing anything. So we, as, as code, don't want to be party to known events. Number, three, number four, and I said this, David, before, that for all Kenyans of goodwill, and you and I come from a community that has routinely suffered from pre, during, and post-election violence. In 92, you know what happened to our people in Kipkare, in Mount Elgon, in Kital. In 2002, you know what happened. In 97, you know what happened. In 2007, you know what happened. Even when you read the Kiliku report, the community you come from lost the highest number of people in 92. In 2007, if we talk about communities, the number one numbers that were lost were Kikuyu, followed by Luya, followed by Luo, and so on. But let me say this, uh, David. But you see, let me say, finish the point. You asked me a question. Yes, it's also yes, decent to yes. give me an I want to, to give answer. you more color. Let me say yeah. this, David, <laughs> that if you look at 2013 elections, the contention in 2013 was even more volatile, so to speak, than it would have been in 2007. But because we have a deterrent in the ICC, no life was lost as a consequence of the election dispute. We have a few people who committed suicide because their preferred candidate had been done something wrong. But nobody picked a machete a stone, a gun, a tire, or anything to violently protest the electoral results because we had a deterrent on us. 
Okay. And this point should never be lost. And the court will continue telling Kenyans that this is one of the positives about uh, the process. But I want to repeat what I've always said. I believe in our solutions to our problems, but we took ourselves to the head. Right. Egg didn't come for us. We'll have to uh, take a break there. You're watching Cheche live on Citizen TV. Senate Minority Leader Moses Watangala, who represents Bungoma, is our guest this morning. We're talking about the ICC, the opposition's position on the ICC. If you've got any questions or opinions for him, um, you can SMS uh, us on uh, 22422 and you can tweet us. The Cheche handle is uh, Cheche underscore TV. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>